Spatial Computing in the Classroom. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Amy Peck, founder and CEO of Endeavor VR. Welcome, Amy. Thanks so much, Tanya. I'm very happy to be here. Tell us about Endeavor VR. Tell us about your spatial computing background and, and kind of where, where that's led you to today. Yeah, I, um, I actually kind of came to VR. We have a saying in VR that everyone remembers their first time. And I launched the enterprise division at a company called Leap Motion. And what they are were, were a, a peripheral, a USB peripheral, where uh, it's gesture control, essentially. And that coincided with the launch of the very first Oculus DK1. And our engineers in you know, super high-tech fashion duct taped a leap motion to the front of the DK1. So I could actually see my hands in a virtual environment. And that was really it for me. I could see you know, all the possibilities for healthcare, for education, for really all manner of enterprise. You've told me that you're especially passionate about the subject of innovation and education. What areas of education could benefit the most from innovation? Well, you know, I look at education in kind of two buckets. You, you know, you think about um, education in schools and universities, and then the opportunity for training and CTE, you know, technical training. Um, and in schools, I think, you know, even seeing my, both of my boys home from college and trying to focus on Zoom meetings, I think it's difficult for us. Uh, you know, I think that there's an opportunity for us to have AR and VR in the home, especially using WebXR. Uh, but the challenge we have is we really need to get to a one-to-one -one headset and it's cost prohibitive to some degree. Um, but the good news is, is that there now are a lot of mechanisms in place. There's a lot of uh, content now. There's actually some fantastic educational content. Uh, and Lenovo is actually coming out with a second version of their classroom VR, which is a combination of an LMS system and it has uh, you know, a cart that has headsets and then there's access to content. So for them, you know, if they were able to find ways now to distribute some of those headsets so that you know, kids and students, uh, both at the uh, you know, high school and middle school level, as well as university, can start at home, build a fluency with the tech. And so when they're back in the classroom, which we hope is soon, but it may not be, uh, that, that they're really ready to go. How do we deploy spatial computing in schools affordably and at scale? It, it is a bit of a challenge. The, the cost, though, is coming down. You know, if you look at products like the, uh, the Oculus Quest, HTC has uh, a standalone called the Focus Plus. And those standalone devices actually make it much simpler to deploy. You know, when you, when you have high-end VR, which is, you know, tethered, it requires a VR-ready computer, that starts to get challenging. Uh, it's also space-intensive. But there are a lot of seated experiences that, that one can do. And uh, again, tetherless device, you put the headset on, you then have access to varied curriculum uh, and especially those seated experiences. So, you know, we're not flailing around the classroom uh, without being able to see. Um, and I also think AR has, has a real place in the classroom as well. And, and, you know, there's a company called Lifelike that has done a lot of uh, individual modules for learning, for engagement. And that is one of the really interesting things is that especially in this sort of 3D realm, children are so much more engaged when they're really able to see a 3D object and man manipulate it and turn it and expand it and, and then you know, have a story around it. So I, I think that you know, the challenges are in the expense, but the good news is content, uh, you know, LMS systems, and then ex, you know, accessible price points. And you know, $399 is still a little bit expensive, uh, which is where you know, Oculus Quest is now, but I think we're gonna start to see that price come down. So assuming then that you get the funding and you can afford it, how do you measure spatial computing ROI in an education application? There is a fantastic group that I work with called Sama Learning. And what they're focused on uh, is STEM education, and they have actual you know, virtual uh, educational modules. And they actually have an AI layer at the back end that uh, really measures the efficacy of the learning. 
But what that's also doing is as we get larger and larger uh, data sets from more and more users, what we can start to do is drill down into individual learning styles. Um, one of the challenges I think in any classroom is being able to serve all of the students the way that they are capable of learning. Some kids are spatial learners, some you know, are linear learners, but this is a way to build those learning profiles. And you know, the concept of adaptive learning has been around for decades, but I think we have an opportunity to really uh, deliver content the way a student needs to learn. So we can put a student through one particular module, use that to assess the way they moved through the space and just by the way they move through the space, we, we have a real understanding of what type of learner they are, then subsequent mod, uh, modules can actually be tailored to the way they learn. And that's something that we are completely unable to do in, in really a, a, you know, a systematic way today. Uh, so that level of ROI is, is just one aspect. And another thing that they have done, just in terms of testing the efficacy of the modules, they have found that particularly with uh, one of their early uh, chemistry modules that students were testing a full letter grade above where they were prior to doing the VR. So the data so far is, is incredibly promising. The COVID pandemic has forced schools to pivot to remote learning. What, what kind of improvements to spatial computing do we need to make uh, to AR and VR, uh, make them even more valuable? I, you know, again, I think it goes back to that that one to one, um, and I think that we need to move to a, a hybrid system. I think Zoom meetings, if we are going to be at home, that's that's one aspect. Um, I think using mobile AR because that's something that exists today. It doesn't require additional hardware. It, I, for me, it's not the best user experience, but at least it's it's a step in the right direction. Uh, you know, and we, we've heard that Apple is going to be coming out with mixed reality glasses uh, in, in 2022 and then uh, AR glasses in 2023. Uh, Google has just acquired North, um, so Focals by North. So I think the hardware is going to be out there in the market in the next couple of years. It's likely we'll be back in school by then, but I still think there's this opportunity, you know, we're all becoming lifelong learners. And I think the opportunity for us to continue learning, to teach how to learn, and to have these realms, of, these educational realms of discovery is something that AR and VR are really going to allow us to do. And it, you know, today, mobile AR, headsets if they're affordable, uh, and WebXR so that we can have these experiences using just our laptops uh, is, is the early path. And then as the technology evolves, I'm really hoping that it becomes a very standard process that you have, you know, your VR modules, your AR modules, and you have your in-person learning. How can we take advantage of spatial computing to create global awareness in the classroom? I love this topic. I'm glad you asked that question. I think I would, and this is my, you know, sort of grand vision is with some of the challenges that we're seeing today, you know, cultural, uh, you know, gender differences, uh, bias. I think that if we bake in this notion of a global classroom, you know, we've had to become part of a global village in defeating this pandemic, but we've done it in defense. What I'd like to see is us get ahead of some of these issues and start to teach children. There are a few schools that, for example, have sister schools in other countries and they have, uh, you know, project-based learning and they, you know, figure out the time zone difference. But imagine actually having students from multiple countries, multiple cultures in virtual environments, either AR or VR, and being able to work on projects together. And that's an opportunity for them to bring their culture into these virtual environments without the politics. And then I believe we can all take a step forward and we'll learn from a very young age to be much more accepting and not just accepting, but to really celebrate other cultures. Because that is something that, that's very difficult to teach in schools today and to give children exposure to other cultures. What are some examples of spatial computing done right in education today? 
Well, the, the company I mentioned, Sama Learning, I, I think, you know, a full letter grade improvement is tremendous. And I think especially around math and science topics, um, topics that children often have uh, difficulty with, or they sort of, you know, hit the ceiling of their understanding in this traditional learning construct. Uh, and there are a lot of math concepts and, and uh, science concepts and, and even art, you know, and sort of artistic endeavors that within a virtual environment, just that visual component and the ability to really see a, a contextual piece or how math is used in the real world or, you know, vector math, for example, and actually understanding vector math in the context of space. I think those are ways that we can, you know, move uh, education forward and also it's it's something that it's intangible today and it's not something that we're able to measure today but I think it's also going to give children uh, and any student a level of confidence that gets gets taken away or subsides a little bit when they get stuck and, and maybe they fall behind in the classroom or the classroom is just learning now they're going too quickly and sometimes children do fall behind. When I say children, I, I should just be referring to students because this could be any learner. I mean, it happens to all of us where we sort of where I've tried coding classes where everyone's getting it and then I'm going, oh boy, I just, I don't quite have that yet. Uh, so the more that we can enable self-guided learning uh, and, and exploration and this visual component to spatial understanding, I think we're gonna see some incredible outcomes and even some that we didn't expect. Amy Peck founder and CEO of Endeavor VR. If somebody wants to connect with you, Amy, what's the best way they can do that? Well, I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty accessible on LinkedIn and also on Twitter at VirtualGirlNY. Love it, Virtual Girl. Thanks for joining us, Amy. Thank you so much, Tanya. Absolutely. And find more of my interviews right here or at TanyaHall.net. Thanks for watching.